The battles of World War II made dozens of combat vehicles into legends. Tankers achieved insane feats on their Shermans, T-34s, and Panthers, while the skies were set ablaze by mighty Mustangs and Spitfires. But one iconic vehicle of that era is standing out even in this extraordinary company. We're talking, of course, about the Il-2 Sturmavik, the most produced military aircraft in history. The work on the Il-2 began in the second half of the 1930s. At the time, the standard attack aircraft of the Soviet Air Force was still the R-5, a biplane light bomber aircraft which was already pretty much outdated. The use of combat aircraft in the Spanish Civil War and in China proved that ground fire was a major threat to attack aircraft, and so the military decided that they needed a new plane designed specifically for close air support. At the time, the military were very much in favor of creating a speedy attack bomber, so an aircraft designer called Sergei Vladimirovich Ilyushin came forward with his own take on the concept. He envisioned something that was almost like a flying tank, a sturdy two-seat monoplane aircraft with an enclosed cabin. The engine, fuel tanks, and key systems were to be protected by an armored shell, and the pilot would be protected by a thick layer of armored glass. If you consider the survivability of this design alone, it was already a major breakthrough as only a few contemporary aircraft were designed with a comparable level of protection in mind. The top brass loved the idea of the new aircraft, but the first prototypes failed to meet the expectations of both the Soviet decision-makers and Ilyushin himself. It was clearly not the way to go. For instance, the AM-35 engine was definitely not powerful enough to make the new aircraft viable. In order to achieve the required level of performance, Ilyushin redesigned the aircraft as a lighter, single-seat design, but it retained most features of the early prototype. It received a new engine, the AM-38, which was optimized for low-altitude operation, making it a great fit for a ground attacker. The aircraft was armed with two wing-mounted 20mm Schwach cannons and two Schkass machine guns. Apart from that, it could also carry up to 600 kilograms of bombs and unguided rockets. This was the state in which the aircraft, now known as the Il-2, was accepted into service, without any proper trials. The first planes were delivered to the airfields in late spring, just a month before the German invasion, so this ground attacker was actively used in combat right from the get-go. As the Il-2 was being tested in battles, units of those ground attackers were sustaining heavy losses. In the beginning, the Soviet industry simply couldn't keep up with the demand and produce enough aircraft to allow Soviet pilots to fight the Luftwaffe on their own terms, so Il-2s had to operate in a very dangerous environment. It's also worth noting that the aircraft had quite a few flaws of its own. As it originally didn't have a gunner, it was very vulnerable to enemy fighters. To make a place for a rear gunner, air crews had to field modify their aircraft by cutting a hole in the fuselage. It took literal years to reintroduce the second cockpit for the gunner. Up until the end of 1942, production models were still being made for a crew of one. Nevertheless, the Il-2 became the main ground attack aircraft of the Red Army. Factories were churning out thousands of them, as they proved to be very useful on the front lines. Bombs let this aircraft eliminate lightly armored vehicles and enemy personnel, its heavy armor protection allowed it to survive enemy fire, and the guns, well, they meant that it wasn't completely defenseless against other aircraft, even though it was still not its specialty. In 1943, the Soviets employed a new variant of the aircraft that received massive upgrades. For starters, it became a two-seater, but it also got a new wing, along with a modified cabin and an upgraded AM-38F engine. Furthermore, as more and more Il-2s were being made, the Soviets started to outfit them with wing-mounted 23mm VIA-23 cannons. The aircraft became more reliable, it could take even more punishment than before, and it was more flexible with its choice of armaments and munitions. The fact that it could carry powerful bombs in its external dispensers allowed this ground attack aircraft to play an important role in the Battle of Kursk and the later battles of the Second World War, as those bombs were very effective against enemy armor. In the end, the Il-2 became one of the most important assets of the Soviet Union that made a major contribution to the victory against Germany. Early in its adoption, this aircraft suffered from high losses and numerous technical issues, 
but it still became a force to be reckoned with. It's no coincidence that 36,000 of those rolled off the factory floor. The Eel II was produced in greater numbers than any other military aircraft in aviation history, and it remained in service long after the war, up until the mid-1950s. But then the triumphant arrival of jet aircraft and guided munitions made the military reconsider their stance on classic ground attack aircraft, and for a decade, they faded into obscurity. But that's a story for another time.